Palomero. Oh, oh yeah. Everett Palomero and Everett McCann, who got sold, came from here. All right, guys, welcome back. Today, we are in Leipzig, and we are currently at Porsche. And this is where the Macan and the Panamera are made. So this has been quite kind of a last second treat. Alex brought us up today, and we are at the cafe just outside the racetrack. They just came in off the track, but they should be getting back out there again here pretty soon. But we just got to the coffee shop. There's a specific coffee shop right here at Porsche, and we got some limited edition glass coffee mugs. They come with a top, they come with this cool like rubber tire like grip that comes off like so. And what's really cool is the sign that they were advertising them with was in German. And Alex mentioned that they only made 1000 of them and that's it. So we, our owners. It's written down there. There it is. Only one of them. Yep. So we decided to get two of them along with cappuccinos and coffees and cookies. But great start to the day. We actually did walk around Leipzig for a little bit. We got lunch there. And now we are just enjoying the nice weather. I'm gonna wash some Porsches and uh, we might get a bunch more footage while we're here. I'm not sure yet. All right, guys, we are at Alex's shop now, and we are about to pull the Opal Cadet and put it up on the lift and take a closer look at this thing because I don't know anything about this car. But what I do know is it runs, it drives, it stops. All right, so we are going for the first drive in the Cadet. So I haven't even driven this thing yet, but <laughs> We're going to have Kayla take it up the street. Make sure it shifts. Wipers work. So this intersection right here. Blinkers work. So it's not on plates yet, so we're just going up the street. Soft closing doors. <laughs> Both sides. <laughs> All right, so basically, we're just getting this thing up and down the street once uh, before we put it on the lift. That'll probably be okay. They'll stop us for seat belts. How does it feel to have another manual steering rack car? I barely noticed. I, if anything, <laughs> the gas pedal's weird. Yeah, it's like stiff. Yeah. It's like nothing or go. Yeah. Crank windows and crank seats. And crank sunroof. Yep, crank everything. Brakes feel good. Shifts, stops, it's all we need. I think it'll be quite a comfortable ride to the Netherlands. And then on to England. No clicking of the axles. The boots look good in the photos that Remco sent me. I think this is gonna cruise down the highway nicely. Mm -hmm. Alex helped me order uh, some filters. We got air filter, oil filter, fuel filter, some oil. We'll do an oil change, but also just get it up on the lift, get the wheels up off the ground, make sure everything's tight, 
wheel bearings, ball joints, tie rod ends. Uh, just get a good look at brake pads in the front. I think the rear is drum. Just get a good chance to get underneath the car and get it prepped and ready. The next few days are jam packed. We're headed to Holy Hall tomorrow and then we're headed to Dresden on Thursday to visit our friend Andy at XS from XS Mag and XS Car Night and also the Felgen Tilt guys. So we're gonna see them on Thursday and then Friday morning we hit the road for Wrocław or as you say in German, Preslo or as you say in English, Rollclaw, Poland for all trace. And as soon as we get back from all trace over the weekend, we pack our stuff into this Opal and drive over six hours straight to the Netherlands to Remco's where we tear the car apart and we're gonna be doing some heavy modifications to this car to then drive all the way to England for Players Classic. Before all that, we're gonna utilize the time we have here at Alex's shop with a lift to basically go through the car and make sure it's ready to go as best we can. We got a few cool modifications we're gonna to do to the car here or a few cool pieces of news and updates on this car just in the last few minutes here. And we'll tell you guys the plan because it's crazy and it's gonna to come together pretty well, I'm pretty sure. It's a cool little lift system he's got here. It takes up a lot of space under the car, but there's no giant overhead lift. It's all in the ground, you can drive over it. Right on the uh, pinch well, where yeah, it's coupled up? Yeah, I will do it there. I usually don't lift opal, so I think it should be the right position. Easy to slam in the rear. Yeah. Separate spring, separate yeah. shock. Rear's pretty easy. Only yeah. fronts are. Fronts are weird, yeah. yeah that's okay. <laughs> okay. And like you said, most Opal Cadets are all rust. Yeah. They're almost half of the <laughs> of the material. Yeah. Oh, this is good. Just that left rear. So this side here, I, even, I can even pull play with just one hand. That might just be adjustment on the wheel bearing. So maybe we'll pull the castle nut and the outer bearing just to make sure the bearing's good. Maybe just repack it with some grease and then tighten it down. And hopefully that's all that needs. The other three feel tight. So it doesn't seem like ball joints or tie rod ends are bad. Axle boots look good. As you guys can see, the opals are just like the polo where the steering arm comes up off of the strut assembly and the knuckle strut assembly are one piece. And that is just like my Fox wagon, the Mark 1.5 Derby and 2F Polo that I built and bagged a few years ago. So it's kind of a, a system that I'm somewhat familiar with. It's not the best system, but luckily Remco from being an Opal guy has made some pretty professional bolt-in kits for these cars. We got some stuff waiting in the Netherlands for this car. We got some stuff waiting. Got it. Oh yeah. All right, so I didn't time-lapse any of this stuff, but oil drained, old filter off, cleaned up, new filter on. So this thing looks pretty good. Axle boots look good. Control arms look good, sway bar end links look good. And what else is really cool is a lot of you guys, if you don't know much about Opal, check it. General Motors, baby. Good old American parts in this German car. <laughs> Control arm bushings look good. This, this can't be original. Floors look great. Fuel tank, fuel tank straps. Brake lines, brake hoses. Exhaust could be replaced a little bit of a hole started there it's looking good tires are good enough to go to the netherlands you know plenty of tread they don't look too dry rotted all right so just pulled the dust cap cotter pin and castle nut pulled the outer bearings out um, the bearings look good so just literally hand packed some grease into them as best we could 
put it back in, but they look, they look pretty good. I think all that needed to be done was that castle nut just turned one more click uh, to tighten it up a little bit, but uh, that's a good sign. Wheel bearings didn't look too bad, at least the outer one. So we're gonna put it back together now. All right, wheel bearings sorted, wheels torqued back on. We changed the filter and drained the oil, so before we forget, Make sure we put some oil in this bad boy. Figures, we didn't spill any. And then as we go to film, I spill a little bit. <laughs> I've got two, two quarts in this thing already. We didn't spill a single drop. And now you start to film and I go too fast. No funnel gang, here we go. See, not even a drop finishing, but the second we start to film, <laughs> always. Oh, almost looks brand new. Let's replace it with a cheap one. Looks like this car has been well taken care of so far. Cheap Opal parts. All right, so air filters in, oil filters on, oil's in. Just gonna get the thing started to fill the filter, make sure we've got enough oil to pop it off with. All right, well, everything looks good under the hood. Air filter, coolant level looks good. Oil level's good. Oil filter's on. This is where Alex came in clutch. Remco delivered the car. Insane, first of all. The whole idea of the plan going through and us continuing on with this original plan of building an Opal Cadet in Europe, Remco came through. Now Alex is coming through, because as you already know, Alex has some wheels and he's got tires. Today is Tuesday. In the next few days, we are jam-packed until all trace, which is even more jam-packed. We come back Sunday night and then that upcoming week is Players Classic. We're not gonna have any time next week when we get to Remco's if we're gonna be pulling this whole car apart, pulling all the suspension out, and installing custom coilovers that Remco has built himself. So, Alex has come through and sponsored the car with a set of wheels and tires that we're gonna mount up right now. Okay, so since time is of the essence, you're gonna to have to bear with us on this. Alex had these here in stock and the right size tires that we're gonna want on them, but more importantly, these wheels are in the right diameter, width, and offsets for an Opal Cadet, because as you can see, the rear fender is not arched. And Remco is an Opal expert, and he knows what wheels will work and what won't. So he gave us a list of dimensions, and we were able to stay within those with a set of wheels that he has here in the right PCD and overall specs. And those are these GTP, they're a one piece that look like a multi-piece. So yes, the dreaded rep wheel. They look like a Porsche twist, but these wheels right here are at Alex's. There's a tire machine. We have tires. We have tires. These are a 17 by 7.5 ET35, and they will fit just under this car, no problem, with a 185 35 17. That's a tire size we don't get in America, and it is like the Euro <laughs> small tire that will stretch on a 7.5 inch wheel. So, yes. In America, I would never run a rep wheel on one of my project cars. We wouldn't do that to the cars we have, so right. because we always do something special. Right. But of course, there there are guys who just that's perfect for a daily or something. Yes. And for someone who wants to run a set of these wheels on their car, they're cheap too. Yeah. They're, they're budget they're and they're for, available. They have TV, so for for the German guys, that's they're probably legal. a good good wheel for the Mark Three yes. Golf or something. Yeah, and um, it looks pretty good. So that's what we've come to on an agreement is the time we have. We have no time. This has all come together literally in the last couple of days. The stars have aligned. Like it's crazy that the car is here, the wheels are here in all the right specs. And he's got the right size tire that we can fit on these wheels literally right here, right now. Yeah. And since time is of the essence, that's exactly what we're going to do. And I think between the three of us, we're going to be able to pull this thing off and make it look so cool. We're basically gonna mount everything up, balance them, and mail them, ship them 
to Remco's and we're gonna drive to the Netherlands on this car, bone stock. So, danke schön. <laughs> You're pretty to, welcome. To Alex and Alex Felgen for uh, being a part of this project in a major way. So Remco and Alex have been uh, secretly planning a lot of this stuff behind my back and uh, it's pretty cool. I'm super excited about this whole project. All right, fuel filter's in. This thing's just about done being on the lift. All right, let's get this thing running. Fuel pump is primed. That easy. I think we're just about ready to go. This is a wild trip. This is a wild trip to Europe. This this just got really interesting. Yep. Look at those rubber bands. <laughs> yes. Full of gum. No air either. Oh yeah. Better. This is only doable because you have this business. <laughs> like you've even got the machine that straps it, you've got all the boxes. This is a one-man show. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's like, we are lucky that I have these, these wheels in stock. I usually don't. It was the last set of these tires I had in stock here. And yeah, today is, well, what day is it, Tuesday? Tuesday. So, and the wheels have to be in the Netherlands like... By Monday. Yeah, so. All right guys, well that is it for the major preparation on the Opal Cadet before we drive to the Netherlands. I mean, huge thanks to Alex for being willing to be a part of this project in this way. I mean, the wheels, the tires, and the right specs, the right sizes were all in stock here. And he had everything to mount the tires right down to putting them in the boxes, ready to go out to Remco. So we can have them there at his shop by the time we get there after all trace in a bone stock Opal Cadet that won't be bone stock much longer. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you guys are as excited as I am for this crazy transformation of this trip. This is a wild collaboration of guys <laughs> making this trip happen to get the Players Classic. So hope you guys enjoyed so far. We got so much more to do. Stay tuned for the next episode, which is tomorrow, or we'll be filming tomorrow. We're going to Holy Hall. Oh yeah, this would be insane wild so check them out on instagram they're building a wide body full custom tube chassis ford capri like group five car that's yeah. gonna be nuts so i can't wait to see that car stay tuned for the next episode remember to like comment and subscribe to the channel we'll see you guys in the next episode